Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. This morning, little Titus here is going out with me for chores. I have two playpen setups out here. One is out by Khaleesi and it's a big playground area. And that's where I'm gonna start him off and see how he does. If he gets whiny because he's lonely, I have a smaller one that I can have set up in the barn where I can keep an eye on him and he can see me while he plays and gets his fresh air. It's very important for puppies, especially ones that are gonna be trained to be LGDs, to get that. They need their fresh air and exercise. And learning to be outside is a great way for him to learn that. Khaleesi is very excited about the puppy. They have met. Khaleesi was quite happy to see a puppy. And the puppy was quite happy to see Khaleesi. Good boy, go Pippi. Go Pippi, good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Titus. That clover is almost as tall as you. So, we feel like this decision was the best decision for our family and our animals at this point in time. Khaleesi is opening up and being much more independent and confident just by seeing the puppy. Look at her, she's not even bothered by the camera. This is a dramatic improvement overnight for Khaleesi. I knew in my gut that this was the right decision. I had a few people that thought maybe this was not the right time, but there was just a few of you that thought that. Most of you thought that this was a great idea. And I do think it's a great idea myself. So that's what it comes down to is what I feel is right at the time. And we will do our best to make it the best situation for everyone. And hopefully it will all turn out just the way I planned. And if it doesn't, then I will make adjustments because that's what we do. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we fail, and we just learn from those mistakes and try to do better next time. <laughs> so much for that. Apparently we're gonna have to work on the puppy's independence. <laughs> he is so cute. So he was, he was, yes, that's what he was doing because I left him outside by himself where he couldn't see me. So I said, okay, fine, we'll set you up in here. I didn't think to bring any puppy toys with me, so I gave him a ball and a rubbery thing and some sticks and a pine cone. And some water. Don't put your feet in the water, silly. He likes to play in his water. I have to keep his water dish on a puppy pad because he keeps spilling it. <laughs> Eat silly boy. There you go. Nice stick to chew on while I milk. And this is good because he'll get to know the animals and being introduced to animals of all different sizes and shapes is really important in the first 12 weeks from what I've been told by my friend Jane at Golden Pyrenees. <clears throat> Sorry if I got the name wrong there. I'm not feeling so hot. I've been under the weather trying to fight off this cold, so bear with me if I sound a little stuffy or if I cough or sniffle or if I just am not coherent at all. <laughs> I'm trying to be. Sweet baby. He is really sweet, sweet. Such a good pup. I'm so happy we got him. Whoops. Second time I've done this, this week. I let the turkey out. I went up to check the buck, water and hay, and left the gate open. I'm used to leaving the gate open. Plus he was in with the ducks, so I didn't think too much of it. But luckily, he's pretty good. I just have the rake with me to steer him. So, if he goes into a corner, hey, 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 buddy. Buddy, 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 buddy. Nope, 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 oh, he's never done this before. 
I'll back up. I'll back up. I might have to do a rescue here. All right, let's get him to safety. Never done a big turkey like you before. I've done ducks and chickens, but never anything as big as you have I got to rescue from these fences. Just don't peck me in the face, that's all I ask, okay? There we go. It's okay, big guy. Oh. Well, I don't know if I got any of that. It looked like the camera was pointing at the ground. I'm sorry if I missed it. But I got his feet untangled, then his neck. It wasn't that tangled, so that's good. <laughs> oh, you upset now. Sorry, buddy. Oh, poor thing. That's some difficult maneuvers there. Mama was able to just open the fence last time and you went right in. I wasn't expecting you to try to go through the electric fence. Poor baby. will follow you. The baby's and mama's first day out since kidding. It's supposed to be a beautiful day today and the mamas seem anxious for some fresh air. So we are going to give it to them. They seem a little nervous about being out but I think once I let the other groups out they'll be doing much better. Hello turkey. You seem to be doing better with the turkey, boys. I'm gonna go ahead and chase these four out so that they get to interact with the babies first. Kids, meeting kids should be fun. And then I'll grab the rest of the goats. All right, you two older kids. You gotta teach these younger kids some tricks. Go on, Daddy. Oh, look at truly checking out that baby. Ah, ah. Rocky's confused. Rocky's like that. Kind of looks like, oh, look. Sister's confused too. That looks like my baby, but it's not. Yep, you guys are going to have to use sense of smell and sound. Oh, look. <laughs> Switching babies. <laughs> Jenny Bloom's like, no. Kitty's my mom now. Sorry, Rocky. <laughs> They'll figure it out. Oh. oh, they're so funny. You two need to go see everybody else. Go on, Shady. Don't be scared, Mama. Don't be scared. You wanted to come out. Go, go hang out with the other kids. Go over there. Come on, here. Come with me. There you go. Go on. Your babies are following you. Don't worry. All right, now to get the rest of the herd out. We'll see how this goes. Sweet babies. Come on. Come on. Go on. Come on. Go on, Fancy. Don't you think about turning around. Daisy, you either. Daisy has been like in perpetual heat. I never knew a goat could be in heat that long. Connect my fence. See the goats attack the hay. <laughs>
Careful, careful, Rocky. You got a baby with you now. <laughs> Shady's nervous. Her baby seems so much smaller now out here. <laughs> Especially compared to big old Jenny Bloom. Oh, Jenny, don't get knocked around, baby. Yeah. Talk about staying right under mom, huh? <laughs> Silly babies. Oh, they're so precious though. This is so great to see them out here, enjoying the fresh air, getting some good exercise. Beautiful. One of my favorite parts is putting them out for the first time and seeing how they react. So neat. Shady is such a protective mama. You're a good mama. Jeez, Daisy and Dominique with the hair standing up on their backs. They're so funny. Hi, truly. <laughs> Hi, Dottie. In no time, those babies will be bouncing like you. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> You're already getting a little bounce. Fern wants to play too. What do you think, Fern? Look at the babies checking out the baby. Oh, that's so funny. They're so cute. They're so cute. They're doing well. I'm happy. <laughs> Are you looking for the puppy? You have so much more confidence now just from meeting a puppy. You're a good girl. You know that. So I've had to put the puppy back in because he was whining and howling and the goats that were coming onto the milk stand were a little bothered by that. But I figured good short intervals of being introduced to the routine is good. I don't want to overstress the puppy either. So short visits with Khaleesi, short visits to the barn for chores will eventually lead up to longer and longer visits and routine chores. And Khaleesi seems quite content with that idea. Every dog is different. Every situation is different. Every family is different. So there's going to be different opinions on ways to introduce this dog to new situations. There's going to be different opinions about whether or not we should have this dog, whether or not Khaleesi should have this dog. There's going to be varying opinions from everyone. All I ask is that you please be respectful and I encourage opinions and advice at all times. So if you do have any, please just make sure that you share them with us in a kind and appreciative way and know that we are going to base our decisions based on what we know. You guys don't see the every day, all day that we do. You guys see a few minutes out of the day. You don't see everything that we see. So we know what's best for our animals and we're gonna make decisions based on the whole picture, not just the 10 minute vlog that you guys see. But we still encourage you to give us opinions and advice if they're kind and thoughtful. And I know that livestock guardian dogs is an area where people can get a bit opinionated and strong about their opinions. And I just want you to know that I have a very flexible opinion about how to raise these animals. And I'm willing to learn more and to try new things, but I also know what feels right in my heart is what I'm gonna follow. So I'm gonna follow my heart and do what I think is best for Khaleesi, the puppy, and our family. 
with the temperature increasing here in Georgia, I don't know that there'll be a whole lot more asparagus that I pick. They're starting to make me feel like I should let them grow and gain energy in their roots where they need it for the following year. So I might get a spear or two here as a snack in the garden, but I don't know about a full meal. The garlic is incredible. It's doing so well. Look how fat. Look, look at how fat that is. I can't even believe how fat that is. So I know I could pull some of these and have some spring garlic. It's a really tender, nice, delicious treat. And I could add that to a dish, but I'm trying to resist the temptation. The cabbage is growing fast. The kale is growing fast, but for some reason the weeds are growing just as fast. <laughs> The purple cabbage is growing even faster, I think, than the green cabbage. But that lettuce is doing phenomenal. And I've got to pick it again to keep it from bolting. So if I keep picking the outer leaves, then it will stay producing more leaves. If I forget to pick, it's going to start producing more, um, try to produce flowers, which we don't want that because then it'll be bitter, bitter, bitter. Would you just look at all that blackberry from that willow tree all the way to that elderberry tree. That's all blackberries all in between and they're all covered with flowers. I should be able to pick a good number from the edges. I wish the thorns weren't so sharp. They are so sharp. They are just delicious. I would really like to get some thornless blackberries. My neighbor has a big patch. I'm thinking about offering to maintain it for him and cut some back. <laughs> so along this edge here, I'd like to plant the peach tree and maybe even dig up some of the trees from the orchard and plant them along this edge with pawpaw and blueberry as understories and then even some raspberries and blackberries hopefully and strawberries even so this will kind of be like our little fruit guild that runs between the pond and the vegetable garden it'll help slow down any runoff coming from the garden and it will be a nice buffer between the wild setting along the pond that we like to keep intact Having a wild buffer along your pond edge is very beneficial to wildlife and to the insects that come to your garden and your pond. So having beneficial insects attracted to this beautiful area is only going to benefit us. Balancing your ecosystem is one of the best things you can do for your garden and for your property. So we keep all things in mind from a permaculture perspective to keep a happy balance and to create an abundant amount of diversity. I know it's hard to see amongst this weedy mess, but we have some pawpaws that are leafing out and some boysenberry that are leafing out that we are gonna have to plant in that area as well and I'm so excited. Our family eats so much fruit. So that's one thing I really, really wanna start getting better about producing more of. And it was, you know, my initial plan from the beginning was starting with fruit. And that's what we did. We planted our little fruit orchard that just never did well. The soil down there is not good and the deer encroachment is horrible. So we need to reconsider that. And that's one of the reasons why it's good to live on a property for a year or two before you decide where you're going to place things. Because it gives you a much better perspective of what's the best location for things. At the time, looking at just a map of the property and judging based off of the lay of the land, it seemed like the perfect spot. Now, not so much. Now that I know that soil is not so great. But it's okay. We're learning and that's what we're here to do. That's what a lot of homesteading is about. <laughs> learning what works and what doesn't work. Just like raising a puppy. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.